Ozone sulfate? Yeah. You, you use it. Do you feel it works? Uh, uh, doubtful. Dr. Konati, your experience? No, I don't. You don't use it. Okay. How about so-called intravascular cocktail installation, hyaluronic acid, combination of steroids, lignocaine? Uday, do you use it? You will be getting such patients. Uh, I don't use it actually, but it can be used. So there's but a lot of you, data. You don't feel, okay. I, I, so a lot know. of things are described in the literature like conjugated estrogen, pentoxyphylin, but perhaps coming to the role of hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Dr. Konati, your experience? I think it works a so, little over half the time, you know, depending on how many sessions, 20 versus 40. But The uh, literature I, says at least 40 sessions. Yeah, yeah, that's typically what we do. Some patients cannot tolerate it, but uh, yeah, if you can go 40 sessions, at least half the time it will work, I think. <coughs> Uday? Yeah, you, so I have got this HBO uh, right you now. You have a no, unit yeah. HBO. So uh, now I am uh, sending this patient to get the... Uh, Directly you recommend yeah. them. Yeah. And yeah. it has been shown with hyperbaric oxygen therapy, if you give it early, perhaps it will work better. Yeah. It won't work, obviously, when there are a lot of clots and a lot of clot retention, that kind of a thing. So there is a good long-term data about use of hyperbaric oxygen for radiation-induced cystitis. Uh, the Canadian Urological Association presented a best practice report. They classified these into different grades, and they, gave, they have given an algorithm, how do we treat this management. But obviously, hyperbaric oxygen, if given early, works. Suppose that is not working. Role of cystectomy diversions. Any precautions during this cystectomy? Dr. Konati, your experience, cystectomy for a radiation-induced cysti, hemorrhagic cystitis. Yeah, so obviously you have to be careful because it was a post-radiated bladder. And these cases, I find a robotic cystectomy is a lot better because the planes are much easier uh, posteriorly and you, know, you can do it much cleaner. Uh, and for the urinary diversion, you have to be thoughtful about what segment you're going to use. Whether it's small <coughs> bowel, you have to be careful whether you want to use small bowel, T colon. Or, or any of the colonic segments. Uday, your opinion? Yeah, so one patient right now in my ward, actually, he has got everything. So we have given the L LM uh, uh, as well. But he's still, <laughs> he's not All responding. these are described, but he, uh, he doesn't uh, respond that. Uh, so you are planning also. a cystectomy. So we got the PCN done, right? PCN, so he's on PCN for diversion. But he's yeah. heading towards a cystectomy. Maybe, may, may require. So. Sanjay? Okay, Gagan, you want to start? So just a quick addition. So you know, because we get a referral for these uh, radiation cystitis for oh, all pelvic malignancies yes, across the country. Cervix. Yeah, the numbers are huge here. We have already exhausted the list of all these. Hyperbaric has shown the advantage only in grade one and two. Early. And the primary endpoint was not resolution of hemature, it was LUTs. Uh, just wanted to inform that we've recently concluded a phase two study and of uh, chlorophyllin, actually, oral chlor chlorophyllin. Uh, uh, actually, the results would be out in print soon, but just to mention that the results are actually seeming too good to be true. Okay. Uh, we've also looked at some quality of life Could parameters. You tell us about that chlorophyll. Uh, we so have I think time. We talk, it's, it might take longer, but all One I'm saying is, that, yeah. So it's basically an oral tablet. We it has been developed with the Bhava Atomic Research Center over a study of a decade actually. Uh, chlorophyllin has been there for many years. So this is but developed for, to reduce the radiation-induced toxicity. Yes, yeah. So there were animal studies to see that it ameliorates radiation and chemo-related -re toxicity on the animal tissue. Uh, the pharmacokinetic studies have been done. The tablet has been produced by a company in Bangalore, actually. So this is an oral It's an oral preparation. But how long it is to be given? So it, it has to be given at a certain dose. How long for the study we have, for the phase two study, we have used it for three months. But what we've realized is that a longer thing, because the benefit is so much, and there is hardly any side effects. So my probably next question is, it is it available for use for the other urologists? So, so that is the next question. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, I mean, there's yeah, everybody would want to know if yeah, it's yeah, working so well. Many, many of these things are going to be in Not yet soon, available. actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. We'll talk about it. Both, both actually. Sanjay, you have any, any experience with post-radiation cyst? Yes. Cystectomy uh, is post-radiation. Uh, no, I I have done a cystectomy in post yes. one patient. Any specific? No, difficulty is like doing a selfish cystectomy after radiation, uh, almost same. It's not more difficult. The uh, the difference in managing these patients are like each and every patients are very different. Some patients just respond to simple cystoscopy and fulguration. Some patient yeah, does not respond agree. to any treatment. 
And uh, there are now literature coming up with epinephrine, intravesical epinephrine, probably in radiation cystitis. So Which is also used for radiation proctitis. proctitis. They are using intramural epinephrine. So we have used in one patient, and uh, I don't know, it's very early to say how it will work. Dr. Kulkarni, briefly, your experience with cystectomies post-radiation. You must have done many years. And Dr. Gupta, you also briefly. Well, actually, between 80s and 90s, we used to do this only. In fact, we didn't do primary cystectomies, post-radiation failure only. Okay. The problems were, of course, uh, if you were doing endoscopy, one of the resident perforated the bladder. So you should never mention about yeah, being very that's careful. That's the problem. The other thing was, uh, the, the I mean, recovery rate was very, very long. Yeah. We used to almost carry those, uh, you know, uh, wounds opening directly and all the kinds of things. So they used to stay longer. Morbidity was very high. Dr. Gupta? Yes. In 80s and 90s. Even higher sometimes. And, uh, and significant more. In 80s and 90s, in all India Institute of Medical Science, when we started cystectomies, most of the cystectomies were only salvage cystectomy. The problems he has already highlighted, the adhesions, it will take long operating time, more incidence of complications. And diversion, there is okay. no question of all this new bladder. We used to do a, a conduit Can diversion, do. otherwise transfers colon diversion. Okay. Thank you, sir. So radiation cystitis, the severity can vary. Sir, why? Yes, sir. Um, sir, uh, so Dr. Conetino, I had heard him say once that he has never seen a bladder that does not come out. And I kind of agree with that. Even if it is stuck, thoda bleeding hoga, time rather lagega, but it comes out. The problem, I think, is the bowel anastomosis. I have seen higher incidence of bowel, bowel leaks, injury, and yes. that is something which can kill the patient. Urine leaks can still be managed with PCNs. They will ultimately heal. Bowel leaks require re-exploration. Yeah, that is the stomas and everything, and that is, I think, which leads to the main morbidity. And that is why sometimes when the patient has a single functioning kidney, it's best to do a ureterostomy, ureterostomy. for that patient. Yeah. Okay. Tick. Thank you. We'll move on. Can I make a yes. comment here? Quick. Uh, uh, as Dr. Gupta said, most of the cystectomy were post-RT and in 1996 when we started in Rajiv Gandhi Cancer Hospital, we did that only. Uh, and we learned a lot of things with that. As uh, Badri mentioned, you, in that time we were not using ileal conduit. We were using transverse colon conduit. And forget about neobladder, but with the time, as the time improved, because of the change in the technique of radiation therapy, I have done post radiotherapy cystectomy and the yeah, followed by neobladder also. It's feasible so in the, select the cases. Conduit, the, the leak which occurs is because of, you know, you have to tailor your surgery, you have to modify your surgery. The ureter, the, do not take the distal ureter at least. That is avoid lower the one third of the ureter. Radiation. Come right. anastomos as up as possible. Right. If you are doing ileal conduit, take the proximal segment, make sure that this yes, ileum sir. is not irradiated. There is no edema in the bowel. There is no particular hemorrhage in the mesentery. And if it is there, don't go, then go for transfer <coughs> right. Thank you. So our we'll go on to the... Yeah. Our experiences is uh, also like that in Bangladesh, Dhaka. We are very uh, frequently confronted with this kind of situations. So in doing... Anything different you do, sir? Uh, from whatever are, has been discussed. Earlier, we are using only the uh, ureteric trans... Uh, <coughs> ureteric cutaneous diversion. Sorry. And nowadays we offer them either colonic or the proximal, uh, proximal ileal conduit, and they works better. Okay, so thank and you. radiation improves. Right, and we are using pentoxifilin in our most of the uh, cases. Some of the patient, half of the patient, they respond very nicely, okay, so but others you. are not. Thank you. We'll move on to the last case. This was a 66-year-old male, diabetic, hypertensive, six months hematuria with clots. Ultrasound and CT showed a 5 centimeter posterior wall solid mass. Histology was a high grade TCC muscle invasive. A PET CT was done, and this showed obviously an FDG with bladder mass, no pelvic lymph nodes, but there was one suspicious node at the aortic bifurcation, and these are the images. One node increased uptake at the aortic bifurcation, while there are a couple of nodes para aortic which have no FDG uptake. So should we call this as an N3 or an M1A? Dr. Uday. Up to the common A leg, it's come N3. This is aortic so bifurcation, that, just at that. Yeah, M1A. So you would call it as an M1A? M1A, it is possible, uh, it's positive. 
So the, my problem is that if you see uh, the other generally, you won't find the escape metastasis actually in CA bladder. It's very yeah, there rare. was nothing in the pelvis. So, yeah. Hmm. So nothing in the pelvis. Nothing in the pelvis. So will, at least on the pet. Yeah. So uh, whether this is positive or something, I would go for the FNAC. If that can it's be too done. Too small to, to do an FNAC. Metastasis or my not. radial, okay. interfacial radial so is difficult to. Uh, yeah. So okay, we'll move on. So anything above the pelvis would be should be taken as a metastatic. Uh, N1, N2, N3, and N4 are well described in the current AGCC classification. So anything above the pelvis, that is all re retroperitoneal nodes would, should be taken as M1A. So biopsy was considered, it was not possible, so how do we manage? In view of that retroperitoneal node, should be a neoadjuvant chemo followed by surgery or should be an upfront followed by an adjuvant therapy? Dr. Ravi? What would you offer him? I would go for a neoadjuvant chemo followed by, it would give a chemo, reassess it. If there is a complete response, I would offer him a local uh, uh, control therapy. So he needs a cystectomy. He needs a cystectomy. So would you also resect the lymph nodes, even if there was a complete response? And it's very likely he might get a complete response, at least in the nodes. If possible, intraoperatively, we would try chasing it, but I wouldn't uh, go beyond and about to chase that node, sir. So you, you would do an extended lymphatic, you would not really chase up to the parotid and all that. Uh, Amit, your opinion, new adjuvant, obviously, or you would you say, prove that it's a metastasis and then only I will give an adjuvant? No, I think new adjuvant. Can new adjuvant is very clear cut, okay. Dr. Connett, any difference? I'm a little worried about the, you know, his consistent uh, clot retention and how he's going to tolerate the neoadjuvant chemotherapy, though that's ideal. No, he's that's not in clot retention, be. was mm. presenting with hematuria with clot, not in clot retention. I see. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I, I would. The other thing to think about, can you laparoscopically or robotically go in and just take out the node, even if you cannot percutaneously nail it? Because you want to identify whether that's truly metastatic disease or not. Yeah, but th that decision is for what? Giving a chemo or not? Correct. No, then it won't be neoadjuvant chemo, right? So if this is M1A, then mm. you, they may give six cycles of chemo as opposed to four cycles. So, so your approach may be a little different. Okay. What you do. So, so it's coming at the question is, should we, will the metastatectomy help in this situation? Amit, what's your opinion? We are going to give a chemo, we're going to do a surgery. I think uh, in the present era, we would definitely want to go in this direction. We, we're becoming more and more aggressive, so someone who responds very well, a solitary node left behind, you would think of metastectomy, or I don't know if we could do SBRT to the node and think of something like that direction. And Dr. Malik, your opinion? Uh, yeah, for nowadays we are uh, moving towards, uh, actually we are treating more radically in oligometastatic situations. Yes. So uh, definitely either by surgery, if not possible, then uh, during radiotherapy we can chase that node. So I think we are health. moving towards a multimodality therapy and there is a role for a consultative surgery also. This was an MD Anderson experience over 15 years, but only 45 patients. And it showed those who responded very well to chemo, PT0, they did actually well with the metastatic tommy disease. So highlights of this paper were node positivity after pre chemotherapy carries a poor prognosis. If there is a complete response, a good prognosis, multimodal treatment can give a 66% five-year cancer-specific survival rate. These are rare situations, but sometimes you get into practice and you have to decide whether a new adjuvant or a surgery followed by then and try to get a biopsy. Anyway. So non-regional lymph nodes in bladder cancer, uh, nodes above aortic bifurcation are to be taken as metastatic disease. New adjuvant followed by surgery is the general approach. Very rarely, if the patient has severe bleeding, clot retention, you may consider, or severe pain local and upfront surgery may be considered. So I want to thank all my panelists and delegates. I have completed my discussion. Uh, yes. Ginal uh, here. Uh, yeah. We have actually a few patients who, whom we had done the Osaka protocol is actually from Japan were in node positive that has shown a better result compared to other uh, modalities like chemo embolization along with radiation. We, myself, Fairidas and Nikhil, we had a team and we used to have a combined this thing. And uh, what patients we had is one of the parietic node with the uh, inoperable thing. We could have a, uh, it was in the palliative intent, we could have a cytoreduction with Osaka, Osaka protocol. Second was actually a renal failure patient who had a six, seven uh, creatine. We had a dialysis plus radiation plus chemotherapy together. So this is actually, we feel that from our limited experience is a good thing and uh, report from Japan is excellent. So I think it is one thing, modality which is underutilized for compromised patients. Is an under 
Srinivas? Another comment which I would like to make is even in Node Positive, recently, two weeks back, there was a publication in JCO. Uh, it was from, again, a multicentric retrospective study uh, from United Kingdom. And they saw that uh, in Node Positive patients also, it is reasonably safe to opt for uh, uh, trimodality therapy uh, with uh, radiation. Trimodality Bladder therapy. preservation is safe. Uh, this is published about two weeks back. Perhaps that is stretching about it too much. We'll patients. await more data. Absolutely, but yeah. I just want to you know put yes. this in, okay. in front of the audience. Thank you very much. Thank you all my panelists. Thank you yes, all sir. the panelists. She has, she has one question. To phenomenon and cisplatin is the main culprit if I remember correctly. Urologists are comfortable having a cisplatin or urologists do not want to change it because the response is good. They are ready to tackle the thromboembolic phenomenon. I think we are comfortable with cisplatin. We are comfortable. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Kashyapi, for your crisp and timely conduction of this uh, panel discussion. I would now like to invite Dr. Arun Singh S. Moses, who's a consultant radiation oncologist at Tata Medical Center, Kolkata, to talk on SBRT for high risk and N positive prostate cancer, if its feasibility in India. Over to you, sir. You have eight plus two minutes. Please wind up in eight minutes so that we have two minutes for discussion. Thank you very much. All right. Yeah. All right. So good morning, everyone. Uh, the topic given to me is uh, SBRT for prostate cancer. So SBRT is the setting uh, of or the technique of delivering radiotherapy where uh, we end up delivering a high dose per fraction. And in the setting of uh, prostate cancers, it is usually in the ranges of seven to eight gray per fraction. And these are usually delivered over relatively few uh, fractions, uh, which are either delivered uh, all on alternate days or uh, once weekly uh, in most settings. And uh, this is especially possible in the prostate because we, we have the technology now uh, that allows us to deliver the radiation dose very conformally and also be very precise about it with the use of uh, image guidance uh, to allow us to uh, target the prostate uh, very precisely. And also the fact that the uh, biology of uh, pro prostate, uh, which is uh, relatively slow dividing in comparison to the uh, nearby normal tissues, and these two facts are what uh, allows uh, SBRT in uh, prostate.